effectively is what we want to address in this session. Participation is a little thinner than we would have anticipated. Probably the Dhaka traffic, I do not really know, but uh, we have already waited for 10 minutes and I think it's time we start the session. Uh, without further ado, uh, may I invite Mr. Ranjit Bhattakur, Chairman of the FIKI Northeast Advisory Council, to welcome everyone. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, <coughs> connectivity uh, has been a program where I'm uh, sort of part of, and I'm very pleased to say that when we started the connectivity program, Mr. Didar Singh was actually the head of FIKI. That's when we launched the program. And that is uh, many years ago. Nevertheless, we're still connecting. Uh, we're still connecting with each other. And what has really happened is a lot has happened. Uh, Ambassador Kareem has been very much part of uh, this whole journey. And um, if you look at it, all the routes that we talked about, road routes, air routes, train routes, and river routes, these were the four connectivity areas that we have talked about. You know, I... After having been to Silchar last week, I was talking to Tadvir Saab that uh, should we not actually introduce a new system which is called a walking route, considering that it is taking so much time for the other hardware. If we do the walking route, the walking route, and you take a boat and cross the other side, I think we have stopped all the problems. There's no whole thing of this business of uh, doing it. And that is how, as Ambassador Karim says, the entire process of informal trade is taken by the walking and cycling route and rickshaw route already. So all we are doing is formalizing it and everybody will benefit. So I think this is a learning that we must have and we should definitely uh, put this on. The councillor was coming from the Indian Embassy. What happened? Uh, okay, so Pratik. So I talked to him about it yesterday. We should call it the fifth dimension of uh, connectivity other than cultural. So we should start that immediately. I think this whole, I talked to the foreign minister when he was there in uh, Silchar last week. So I think this is something we must examine. I'm sure there will be objection, but it is the easiest one. They can't say boat, they can't say dredging, they can't say anything actually. There are no more reasons why we can't do it. So, and then I'm saying we need river boat system. They're big river boats. Let the Navy run it. One boat is the Bangladesh Navy and one boat is the inland water Navy of uh, India. So even security will be prob not a problem. So we don't have to get into this heavy protocol, one protocol routes, walking route, rubber dinghies, cross, take your wares. Some will be uh, rubber dinghies with uh, what do you call it for trade. And some will be just for passenger traffic. So this is one thing we wanted to say to expedite it. So welcome all of you and uh, thank you. I'm passionately involved in uh, trying to make sure that the River Rhine system uh, works. Uh, Ambassador Karim and Ambassador Gautam Mukabadai actually educated me to say that we are a river, river Rhine civilization. And this River Rhine civilization, the British 200 years ago built a whole industry of oil and tea in this whole region, including in Silet, through the river, we are now actually trying to reinvent it and have got enough reasons why it doesn't work. But 200 years ago, it worked. Surprising, but nevertheless, there's not better not talk more about it because we know the fact. I think the river systems are cheaper, they are cleaner, and they are carbon friendly. It addresses today's needs. This is not something we've said earlier, but this is some, something that we've emphasized many times uh, before. That actually, if you do the River Rhine system, it is a very uh, sort of beneficial for everybody concerned. Uh, and actually, what we really are feeling is that at this conference was based on uh, the reason we did it. It was sparked off by Bhaskar, who is the managing director of Numalika Refinery, around en energy security. And while India and Bangladesh have a uh, perfect relationship on energy security, primarily from Palatana to Eastern Bangladesh. I think it is a good idea and the Northern grid, which will finally get linked up. I think we need to do the energy security of hydrocarbons. And uh, we actually are working towards uh, an entire delivery system, distribution system of one of the closest refineries here in the based in the Northeast in Nomaligar. 
I think Bhaskar will talk about it more. Your challenges, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Again, here, if you notice in the afternoon, people are wanting to do it, but they're saying privatize it. That's the message. And there are enough private owners to do transshipment uh, delivery system, transshipment retail distribution. So I think again, we can cut the corners of saying, do you have bus permission, car permission? BBIN is not working. Bhutan does not agree. Now the customer, oh my God, there are 52 forms you have to fill up. Who wants to do business like that? So better to be just a smuggler. And who can stop us? Smuggling is there from Bangladesh to us and we are to them. So I cannot understand that why we are not being able to implement it. We need far more dynamism if that means that we should come here more often. We should, you know, but if we do this, it's a great success of something of the past. It's our inheritance to go by river. We are being denied our own history. I cannot understand this. So with that, I think we will open it up. Uh, and I think uh, this session has uh, very erudite people, so we will definitely be able to take it forward. Let me ask Ambassador Karim, then uh, uh, Tanvirji, and then Bhaskar, and then the Commodore to speak on various things. That's really what it is. And then Didar Singh will come on the, he's sharing the next session. Yeah. Oh, there's an order. Sorry, after me is Bhaskar, you, then Tanvir Sahib, then is Commodore Sahib, and then is Tariq Karim Sahib. You have the final word as always, so there's no problem on that, okay? <laughs> that's true, that's true. So, so welcome everybody. I hope we actually can recommend something really strong and implement it. But enough, how much paper we have wasted, that's also climate change problem, no? cutting the trees. Too much. Anyway, over to you, Bhaskar. Thank you. May I request my colleagues to... Please come, sir. Just a token of felicitation. It's a khada. Uh, it's from Arunachal Pradesh. This is a symbol of sincerity and peace. So I hope this brings sincerity into our efforts for connectivity. Very good afternoon. Uh, my sincere thanks to Fiki for giving me this opportunity. This is something which is also very close to my heart. Actually, we had been at this connectivity issue uh, since we had commissioned the refinery in 2000. There were sporadic efforts. In 2004 to 2006, we had actually exported uh, petroleum products, mainly diesel, through flat bottom barges from place called Silghat in Upper Assam. In that, uh, Upper Assam is the eastern side of Assam, to a place called Bagabari. So through Siraj Ganj was the port of call here. So somehow, uh, since the infrastructure was deficit, we could not carry on. But we did not lose hope. We followed up with a agreement between uh, Bangladesh Petroleum and Numaliga Refinery to supply high-speed diesel to Parbatipur by rail from Siliguri, and which is continuing till today. Now it is getting augmented by a pipeline running from Siliguri to Parvotipur. It is in the last leg of being commissioned. So hopefully by uh, February end, we should have product coming from Siliguri by pipeline to Parvotipur. So that has been our journey so far. We are also exporting wax. People are keen to have our paraffin wax, which is one of the best in the world. This is the beauty with the Assam crude. We are extracting that. So that being the history so far, as far as NRL and Bangladesh connectivity is concerned, we are looking forward for even much greater uh, participation because, uh, as you know, uh, India has become very serious on developing their inland water uh, network. And uh, as a uh, consequence of that, a multimodal terminal is coming up at uh, Jogi Gopa, which is 100 kilometer upstream of Indo-Bangladesh border. So it is very close. 
and uh, I have been told by the Bangladesh Petroleum colleagues that they always struggle to move the product upstream to places like Chilmari and Bagabari during the peak of the winter because of the draft issues. Uh, from uh, They do it typically from uh, Narayan Ganj and uh, that too happens through flat bottom barge. That was the initial thinking why we started exporting from Silgat. But later on, we found that Silgat is too deep into the Assam territory and it is better if we have some facility very close to the border, which is what we are having now. So it is under construction. Hopefully, it will come sooner than later because uh, IWAI is uh, coordinating from uh, India side and uh, uh, there are agencies who are already working on that. If that comes through, Numoliga refinery is planning to have a tankage over there which will be rail fed and then we will uh, load from there in barges. Now, I hope barges are already available and plying in Bangladesh. Those are ready infrastructure which are which can uh, sail uh, up to uh, Yogi Ghupa and take load and distribute product and to start with diesel to Chilmari, Bagabari and finally to Narayangans if required. So this is the energy association that uh, NRL can have. This pipeline itself can also be extended. That is a separate issue. This is, and then the borders that we have, uh, say in uh, uh, Dauki and then uh, Karimgan side, then also uh, the Bangla Bandha. Bangla Bandha is only five kilometer from the a huge terminal that we have at Siliguri. So all these border points can also be used for trading. We are expanding refinery many folds. Uh, we, are, we are a 3 million ton refinery. By end of 2024, we should be producing 9 million ton. There will be a large number of LPG which will also get produced along with uh, petrol and diesel. So you can, uh, there, there is a lot of uh, avenues that uh, energy cooperation can happen between India and Bangladesh. And connectivity can play a key role. Obviously, we have to address a lot of issues which are there at the border crossing. When we have implemented this project, we have uh, experienced that. There are uh, very undesired delays which happen at the border. I am talking about uh, Petrapol, Benapol border where most of the exports did take place. It was a pain to cross that border, to be frank enough, because uh, there is one waitage period at India side large number of vehicles do have to get in queue to reach to the Benapol border. Once the Benapol border is reached, the vehicle crossovers and I have to unload the materials at the gate for a Bangladeshi truck to pick up. All these delays and transshipments add to the cost of export. So therefore, we, uh, the, we lose the advantage of being neighbor. This is where actually we should look at because the distance and the logistic cost can make a lot of difference to the commodities which are being consumed by people at a cost. Therefore, I urge this forum to come up with uh, activities. Uh, we India, we at India, we boast ourselves to be an IT powerhouse. Being an IT powerhouse, why we have not been able to implement all this IT infrastructure at the border to make the uh, export smooth? Because all documents, now we are in GST regime, all the invoices are made and then these are posted in GSTN server and a, uh, definitely a uh, feed can be taken from that to the custom station wherein documentation can take place. These are very, very authentic kind of a ecosystem that India has. Similar ecosystem can also evolve in Bangladesh so that the transition becomes very, very smooth. Transport because logistic cost reduction will eventually make the product available at a competitive rate to the customers. So with this few thought, the one, there are many ways we can connect. River ways has to be revived. Do, there are uh, infrastructure coming up and there are transport arrangements which are already available. That is one. Second, the road transport can be made smoother. I ha had been making this point in whatever forum I do get. Transshipment is one of the avoidable things that we can do. Uh, each other's truck can go in deep into their each other's territory. Maybe with a crew change, if at all required from security concern. So that can also be thought of. And if these two issues are addressed, 
I think uh, the sky is the limit. We have a lot of trade to be made with Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fukan. I think uh, that, uh, that was very aptly said. Uh, the sky is the limit. Uh, there is a lot more that we can do. Uh, uh, there are only some uh, procedural issues, some small issues that need to be addressed. Uh, if we can address those, maybe we can go farther. Uh, we have with us Dr. Shah Mohammad Tanvir Mansoor, who is uh, uh, the uh, Director General at Ministry of Foreign Affairs here in Bangladesh. But we also consider him partly Assamese because he has spent a lot of time in Guwahati and he perhaps knows the issues surrounding connectivity with uh, Bangladesh from Northeast better than many people. So may I invite Dr. Tanvir. Okay. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman of Northeast Advisory Council, uh, Mr. Ranjit Bharatakur, sir. Mr. Chairman of BIWT, Commodore Balam Sadek. Most importantly, legendary diplomat of Bangladesh, Ambassador Tariq Karim, sir, who actually played the pivotal role for creating Bangladesh Assistant High Commissioner in Guwahati. And we shall remember you, sir, for, forever for us, such initiatives. Managing Director of uh, Numan Legal Refineries, Mr. Bhaskar Jyoti Fukan, and Dr. A. Didar Singh, uh, Mr. Vishwadi Chakraborty of FIKI, Regional Director of FIKI, and uh, respect dignitaries and guests, and must be uh, Director of uh, VWTA, I forgot the name, sorry, and Ms. Sharmila. Uh, good afternoon. At the outset of my speech, I'd like to remember the role of father of the nation of Bang Bangladesh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman, by whose clarion call Bangladesh earned independence, and who founded the basic framework of India-Bangladesh economic relationship by concluding India-Bangladesh Friendship Treaty in the year 1972. At the same time, I would like to remember all the Bangladeshi and Indian soldiers who made the supreme sacrifice in 1971 for the independence of Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm highly thankful to Balipara Foundation and Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industries for organizing such a well-timed seminar on trade and economy and connectivity issues. I must have to express my gratitude to the government of Assam for providing full support during my tenure as the Assistant High Commissioner of Bangladesh in Guwahati. And particularly, I'm thankful to Honorable Chief Minister of Assam, uh, Hemanto Bisho Sharma, uh, Active Policy Affairs Minister Chandra Mohan Patori, and then Environment, for, uh, Forest, Fisheries uh, Minister uh, uh, also. And actually, I stayed in uh, Assam for four years, more than four years. And uh, I was posted in Japan, I was posted in Dubai, I was posted in Russia. But such honor I never received in anywhere like in Assam. This is the highest honor and best privilege I received in India uh, during my posting tenure in India. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that the GDP growth rate of Assam is one of the best in India. We have a wrong idea that maybe Northeast India is very poor, but it's completely wrong. If you go through GS Road, you'll find all the best brand shops in that road. And the present growth rate of Assam is 10%, tremendous. Under the leadership of Honorable Chief Minister Sri Himanto Bisho Sharma, during pandemic time, Assam, particularly the city of Guwahati, witnessed much infrastructural development. Therefore, it is a high time to expand and enhance economic and trade partnership with Bangladesh. Why Bangladesh is so important for Assam? 
On the other hand, Bangladesh is so much important for North East India in her endeavor of active policy. Bangladesh is moving ahead with GDP growth rate of 7.2%. Under the charismatic leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, the GDP growth rate of Bangladesh before the pandemic was 8.13% in the fiscal year 2019 and 20. And it, is, it was one of the highest in Asia. Bangladesh is the 31st largest economy of the, in the world in terms of size of GDP. In this foray, Bangladesh considers the connectivity with Northeast India as a wonderful opportunity to trade on essential items, which are quite difficult to be transported from other parts of India. You know that chicken next Shilogori is the only route for connecting itself with the rest of the parts of India. At the same time, as the resourceful hinterland of Bangladesh, Assam may use Chittagong and Mongla port in the near, in near future. In this regard, an agreement was signed in the year 2018 for using Chittagong and Mongla port only for the Northeastern tra traders. Recently, in the month of August 2022, the trial run for the transshipment of goods through Mongla port to Northeast India via uh, through Tamawil and Dauki land custom station has been completed. I myself attended in that flagging of ceremony, along with uh, Assistant High Commissioner of India in Silet, and also Customs Commission of Silet region. And it was a historic moment. And apart from this, I must have mention about tourism opportunity. We have to develop joint tourism circuit between Silet region and Meghalaya and Assam. You know that Quite a good number of uh, tourists that seek visa in my office for visiting Shahjalal Dorga and some other very important temples in Silet. They're very enthusiastic to see what is Dhakeshwari temple in Dhaka. On the other hand, people from Bangladesh, they want to see high hills, large mountainous areas, very much enthusiastic. And uh, what is joint tourism circuit actually? When a, a tourist should uh, plan to see at a stretch many important places. So that is a tourism circuit and for the Europeans it can be a very good opportunity. And you know that Meghalaya is called uh, Scotland of the East. So uh, if you visit Bangladesh also in Sunamganj area, you find very large and very big house uh, we call when a water wheels you'll find in Suram Ganj and uh, Silet region. Molivadar, uh, in the district of Molivadar, only in Molivadar, there are more than 100 resorts. High standard resorts are there. So there should be tourism circuit. And now if I come to the point about education, do you know that every year more than 200 to 300 students, they're taking admission in the private medical colleges of Bangladesh. I was astonished when I joined in my office, I found that the students in Assam they're choosing Bangladeshi medical colleges. And after coming back, after the completion of their education, they, are, they could enroll in the national curriculum uh, 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 and they could register themselves as good medical doctors in India. So that is also a big window for relationship, education sector. On the other hand, from Bangladesh also, uh, in downtown university, more than 100 students are pursuing their education. In USTM, quite a good number of students are pursuing their higher education. In Nehu, students are getting scholarship and enrolling themselves. And in NIT Silchar, there are more than 80 number of students pursuing higher education. NIT Silchar, where we have established, implemented a bongo bundu corner. In Assam Downtown University, also we have impl implemented a bongo bundu corner. Distinguished guests, we know that bilateral trade between Bangladesh and India has touched more than $16 billion. However, there is a big trade gap in to a trade. Out of 16 billion, India export to Bangladesh of the amount of 14 billion and Bangladesh export to India only $2 billion. Out of $2 billion, 50% uh, trades are taking place in apparel products, apparel sector. And uh, second most important product is, to my surprise is rice bran oil. And third most important product for Bangladesh is jute and jute goods. However, uh, we have to diversify it. Trade diversification is very important. It's very important for Bangladesh, not only for Bangladesh, for both the countries. 
Now about uh, connectivity projects, uh, we know that uh, Government of India has extended $7.362 billion line of credit. And uh, you people uh, from India, you supported us in 1971 and still you are supporting us in these days also by extending line of credit. And that line of credit uh, being utilized in various development projects, particularly in the connectivity projects and more particularly in the railway projects, in the waterway projects also road projects also. And people of Bangladesh expresses heartfelt gratitude to the people of India for this help. Once these connectivity projects will be completed, it is expected that Bangladesh will be able to enhance its export to India by 297%. It's a result of, from a very authenticated uh, research. And India will be able to enhance its export to Bangladesh by 172%. Therefore, these projects under LOC, line of credit, should be accelerated at any cost. But uh, as a diplomat, I should not say, but sorry to say that it, uh, it is uh, uh, in being implemented at a sluggish growth. It should be uh, more impetuous. We should bring more impetus into these projects. Particularly, uh, if I uh, mention about Shabbat uh, put to Mohishashan projects, this languishing, only um, less than 40% is completed. So this particular uh, railway line should be completed at the earliest because it is the only railway line project which connects Northeast India. Other, from other uh, side, like uh, in, inside Bangladesh or with Khulna, in uh, Pabna area, Ishodi, I mean, in Dhaka area, but this is the only railway line which will connect Northeast India. We must have to uh, must need to come out of traditional items of export and import. As I've already mentioned, that uh, we are stuck up with the traditional items in the export import of Northeast India. With Northeast India, we uh, import Bangladesh imports coal, boulders, limestone, sands, and few amount of vegetables. And these also being traded by only uh, a group of a, a group of uh, traders who do not want to uh, uh, lose the grip. They do not uh, very much. They are not very much welcome to the young entrepreneurs. But why young entrepreneurs should come to, into this business? When they go to the land custom stations area in Dauki, Tamabi, Lord Shavala, Shudrakandri, Dalu or Dhubri, or Varsara, they find that the situation is very cumbersome. There is no proper land port facilities, no Wi-Fi facility, toilet facilities, huge queue of the uh, trucks, huge pile of the trucks. So young entrepreneurs, they do not, they, they lose interest to come up with a new basket of products. Sir, we are spending a lot of money in organizing seminars. We are spending, we are talking a lot with sweet words, but why don't we do a single thing? Please upgrade the land custom stations. Please upgrade only the system in the immigration and customs assessment. That would be, that would suffice more than 50% of our target. And, uh, <clears throat> Coal, boulder, stone, ginger, area, nut, and fruits, these are the things we import. On the other hand, from Bangladesh to Northeast India, the traditional items exported are food products, plastic items, books, renewed garments, and cement. That's all. Only this. But we are always telling and always researching, uh, doing research that, yeah, well, Northeast India is quite far from the main part of India, so this is a good opportunity, best opportunity to uh, take it from Bangladesh. But are we really doing in the real world? Both the sides, the customs officials, they're very much rigid. But on the other hand, if you look into the situation in uh, Darshana, I mean, Benapol, Hili, Bhumra, or uh, Changda Vanda, Bangla Vanda, those uh, systems are much better than the systems in the Northeast India. Intentionally, they are keeping it is uh, bo keeping bogged down. So I don't know why. Sarah was telling that men, mindset of should be changed. My mental uh, me, mentality should be changed. And somebody was telling that yeah, there are some other issues also behind that. <laughs> so, 
Sir, just change these two things. That's enough. Our Honorable Two Prime Ministers, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, already have done their own job. Land port officials, truck drivers over there. Why such delay? Why such harassment? The people who are doing trade, they are accustomed uh, with this uh, present situation from their forefathers. But any new MBA graduate will join there. Never. We are sitting inside air conditioned room. Are you, do, will you agree to do business to such cumbersome situation? Sorry, I'm prolonging my speech. I'm sorry. Another very important issue that Bangladesh India So you have to uh, think first that whether I should sign this agreement or not. I have, if I sign this agreement for such capacity, for such amount of supply, then you should sign it. Agreement was signed, but suddenly because of court order, this uh, supply of limestone was stopped. Then this uh, Chathok cement factory limit, that is also shut down its operation for the last two years. So that value chain, was hampered. It's a big loss for both the countries. Now, because of very uh, extreme diplomacy from our office and Bangladesh Foreign Office, now again it is, it is going to be started. We have negotiated with the, the government of Meghalaya and the government of India, the Mining Authority of India also. Now they will again start supplying limestone. So policy, government policy is very important. Government policy is very important. Another big example is supplying of coal from Meghalaya to Bangladesh. 
around uh, four or five years before, Magellan High Court, they imposed sanction on import exporting coal to Bangladesh because of creation of rat holes. I understand it's a very serious issue. But just a one, a one or a one and a half year before, again, High Court is telling that, okay, you can export, but in scientific method, you have to excavate. Then again, stopped. Again, start, again, stop. Several times. So what happened? Every day I receive complaint from Bangladeshi coal importers that, sir, I already sent the LC money. My LC money is stuck up. How can I get it returned? And they also proposed one solution to me. Sir, uh, there are 32 lakhs metric ton coals under the disposal of coal, uh, coal, uh, authority, coal authority of India. And from that deposited coal, they can uh, make up this uh, gap so that our LC money will not be wasted. I told them, why don't you get your LC money back? Well, sir, no system, because already it is uh, entangled with tax system, GST system. So nothing to do. So I request to the uh, dignitaries from India the sir and uh, we have come from India, please raise this issue that our, uh, a good number of uh, coal importers from Silet, they have incurred huge loss because of this system. So government policy should be consistent for a long time. You should not change on and off. So that is one thing. Now our importer, they're turning their face. They are importing now coal from other countries. They're importing stone from other countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, even from Qatar, Kuwait, leaving behind our next door neighbor. It's a great fun. It's the irony of fate. Def definitely you should be serious about uh, environment, but that should be a consistent policy. As diplomat, I cannot say a lot of things, but it's from my personal experience for the last four years in Meghalaya. <clears throat> so both the countries should sit together for uh, formulating joint supply chain. And uh, that is very important. And another thing is that uh, Northeast India has to aggrandize or enhance its industrial capacity. We know that uh, you produce good handmade fabrics, but if you really want to uh, export it to Bangladesh, you have to go for higher capacity so that we can uh, uh, use it in, in other value addition process in Bangladesh. And definitely Northeast India has to uh, increase skilled labor force uh, in uh, the sectors of export and import. And uh, about, but the most important thing I have to mention that we have to modernize the land ports, customs uh, facilities. And in many ports, there is no weighing machine. Even if there is weighing machine, it is kept out of order. I don't know whether intentionally or naturally. Weighing machine is kept out of order. Maybe. Uh, naturally, it goes went out of order. But weighing machine is not working. You use volumetric system for assessing the customs. In these days of uh, 2022, enter world is uh, now digitized. Uh, we are also uh, keeping um, making slogan digital, digital, digital. But uh, there is no weighing uh, machine, weighing machine facility in the land customs stations. It's a very uh, great fun. They, they use some gauge and tape and uh, width and long. Then they just make it square and assess the amount of the uh, products. And in that way, they assess the value of the customs. Isn't it real fun? So our customs officials have to be made concerned about that. And there is no proper parking facility, as I have mentioned it, that uh, one truck driver has to wait for seven days for reaching up to the assessment point. A uh, truck driver has to wait for seven days. Inside the truck, they sleep, they take food. They, what is the toilet facility? I don't know. Such inhuman situation. In almost all the 
land scarcity stations of northeast india and bangladesh it is not the uh, weakness of india but also bangladesh both the countries actually i have lot of issues to mention but i think that i am running short of time already i have spent much amount of time and uh, just two things i have to mention that uh, Bangladesh Assistant High Commission had brought out a business directory. It is available in online also. We have put the contact details of all the major exporters and importers of both the countries. No, enter Northeast India and enter Silet region, Mulavi, Wajar, Sunamgan, Hobigans, and Silet. So uh, you can use that business directory. Uh, it is available in Bangladesh Assistant High Commission, Guwahati, and also available in Foreign Ministry in Dhaka. And it has a um, web version also, online version also. And uh, like Swiggy and Zomato, we have created an apps also. By using that apps, you can put your order. Uh, for example, if you want to uh, import garments from Bangladesh or Jamdana Sari Bangladesh or Bangladeshi person wants to import Moga silk or any uh, uh, fruits from uh, Assam, you can put your order. All the items are there. So it's a uh, uh, good work from our office, Assam Bangladesh. And also, last month, we have created IBCCI Guwahati branch. India Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industry Guwahati branch. Under the patronage of Bangladesh Eastern High Commission in Guwahati, uh, we have created this organization. Uh, and that is uh, chairman is Abdul, Abdul Matlov, sir, you know. And it has a Guwahati branch also. And lastly, I uh, express my heartfelt thanks to all the organizers and particularly Ambassador Tariq Karim, sir, because he, and, uh, Eastern High Commission of Bangladesh in Guwahati is the brainchild of Tariq Karim, sir. And actually, Bangladesh India relationship took a different shape when he took charge as the ambassador of Bangladesh. In, I come from Bangladesh in uh, New Delhi. So uh, thank you so much. Mr. Khongar is there. He was also very, uh, very much helpful to me. Uh, thanks to everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Tanvi. Uh, I think uh, that was a very in-depth and very focused practical analysis of uh, the current situation in trade and movement of goods between India and Bangladesh. Uh, while we are aware of many of the issues, uh, the issues have been pending for a long time. And as you rightly said, policy st stability uh, and ease of uh, trade, ease of doing business, I think, is key. So thank you very much. We will definitely take this up with our government and we will work with you on this. Uh, prior to 1947, I think the uh, Northeast was uh, well developed compared to many other parts of the country. And primary uh, mode of connectivity through which the entire tea industry, the oil industry that was developed in Assam and the Northeast was the riverine route. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have as much use of the riverine route as we had then. Today, we have with us Commodore uh, Gulam Sadiq. He is the chairman of Bangladesh Inland Water Transport Authority. And Bangladesh has a thriving uh, inland water transport system, which, which operates within the country. Despite having so many protocols which have been signed, and actually there are no policy bottlenecks at the moment. Uh, the movement between Northeast India and Bangladesh have not really taken off. Uh, we hope to learn from Commodore Sadiq uh, uh, as to what could be the reasons and wh what could, could be the way forward. Over to you, sir. distinguished presence. Um, I have a small uh, 15 to 16 slides to show you. Uh, already Dr. Mansoor, our DG has uh, uh, very uh, elaborately have explained our <clears throat> what we can do in the business sector by connectivity and also what are the lackings. So I will not go into that um, without uh, addressing and wasting time, sir. I'm, straight away I will go uh, into the details of what we do, Bangladesh Inland Water Transport Authority, and what kind of facilities we can provide to connect Northeast India uh, to the western part of India 
through Bangladesh. Actually, rightly said, Mr. Vaskar, that uh, uh, it, that was the only mid modes of transport uh, before 47 or 100 years back. That is the uh, that is the uh, mode of uh, waterways. And uh, slowly, the British came and they have introduced the railways for their own purpose, of course, carrying their goods. And uh, finally, uh, now, uh, as the development goes, we have concentrated and more on the roads and the uh, the easiest mode of transportation that is the waterways got uh, very much neglected however bangladesh we didn't have any choice so we we uh, have adapted and continued to uh, use our inland waterways we had our this authority almost uh, uh, 60 years back i will show you one by one and uh, definitely i will cover uh, the mainly uh, the portion what are the challenges we have and uh, what are the good news i can give you on the inland waterway sector you can see it is well um, understood that bangladesh is the pivotal point simplest regional connectivity in south asia as we sit in the middle of northeast india bhutan nepal and indian western part and you can go to even we have we touch also myanmar and there are 54 uh, the transboundary rivers we, we have and also three with Myanmar so very easily we can use these waterways you can go to the next slide so this uh, inland water transport authority was established in 1958 through our government ordinance and uh, this Bangladesh after uh, right after the liberation our father of the nation have he realized that inland water transport is trans transportation system need to be vitalized even he bought seven dredgers that time and that was our main focus but slowly gradually we have uh, reduced we have neglected that focus this the next slide uh, and uh, we have given in uh, more priority on the roads however this organization remained working which is now uh, have the highest priority of the government later you will understand what we do Inland Water Transport Authority, we uh, develop the uh, connectivity by dredging, maintaining the roads. Also, we uh, give the navigational facility, the landing uh, facilities, and also the rules and regulations. And finally, the another very important part of us is the hydrographic survey and search and rescue. If there is any uh, event happens the, in the waterways, it is BIWTO will go there and do the salvage operation with the help of other organizations. So you, you understand that uh, it, it has got highest priority that we can use our inland waterways, which we had before. In 1972, the protocols were signed, but uh, you understand for various reasons we can use, the, we couldn't use that. And in uh, 2010, vigorously we have started after uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, he, she took over and the inland waterways got uh, more vibration. Next slide. So uh, as I was trying to tell that in the introduction, Mr. Ranjit already said it is cheaper, safer, and also greener, the transportation mode. But as a uh, research showed that the shortest, uh, as it, the short, shortest the route is, your value will, uh, or the cost will be more, but Slowly, as you go to the longer trips, you have to depend on the uh, the maritime or the river routes. That will give you more value of time and also the cost. Next slide. Here also, if you see, road is the only you can use the shortest distance is the last last mile connectivity you can do with the roads. That will save more of your effort of maintaining the connectivity and rail and the maritime or the waterways should be in the longer distances and of course fuel cost this is uh, i think most of you have seen it is more greener uh, one liter fuel can move 24 tons on road 20, 85 tons of cargo in the rail and 105 tons of water in the waterways bangladesh has uh, as I, the beginning i said uh, we uh, we are in a good position to be used by the neighboring countries and we have started with BBIN 
it is not getting through because of the bhutan has opposed but we can continue uh, with the effort of that excluding one b bin there is no harm in it even we can uh, include myanmar we have a lot of uh, waterways connectivity trade between myanmar from sitiway always there is a uh, port in the technaf lot of goods are coming and also uh, the exports are happening next please sir so these are the regional connectivity we have 10 routes already being identified as uh, if uh, someone or, or some of you are not aware you can see that from kolkata all the way if you come through uh, up to aricha and then go up to brahmaputra to dhubri and even up to pandu it's the longest distance you can go there there are also jogigopa silgat and dhubrigarh all, all those area you can go even uh, from Kolkata, you can use the same route, come up to Chatpur and then go to Karimganj through that uh, Jokiganj, Karimganj. That route also can be used. And now uh, also we have started that, uh, uh, just now said, uh, it is being mentioned that Gumti River is being used to connect uh, uh, Tripura with our, uh, from uh, Narangonj, you can go up to the Meghna and then up to um, uh, through the Gomti River, it's 90 kilometers river. We have already started a uh, project of dredging there. We, can, we have done a trial run. We have identified the problems. We cannot take big ships. I, you can easily take uh, the smaller ships of uh, up to 100 to 200 tons. And now one effort is being made. The focus is on route number 56. That is coming through uh, Ratshahi if you enter. Uh, IWA is making a lock there. Uh, the Jangipur lock, if we can use that, uh, definitely uh, you can go to the previous slide. The distance will be reduced here from if you uh, mark on the Dhulian on the left side of the slide, Dhulian come to Aricha and then go up again. Uh, so it will be on, uh, almost 100,000 uh, kilometers of distance will be reduced if we can use that route. And as uh, our uh, DG has mentioned, Dr. Mansur, that the customs is a big problem on both sides. If the customs can uh, uh, allow us, we can start right at this moment. We are ready to uh, connect Maya on the uh, Indian side and Godagari on Bangladesh side, in the side. And slowly we can come down up to Aricha. Okay, you can go to the next slide. So uh, uh, as we were sitting uh, with Ambassador uh, Karim, then previous slide, please. Actually, uh, the uh, effort is not that bad. He was telling the elephant has to be moved one step. We have already started moving the elephant, actually, sir. If you look at there, we have started with, uh, you can go to the uh, next slide. Okay, next slide, please. Here you, you can see uh, we have 4.7 million tons, metric tons of cargo being carried with 5,000 plus ships. And actually, in 2001, uh, we had only 400 ships carrying 100, uh, around 100,000 uh, tons of, 1 lakh tons of cargo. But it has reached up to uh, 4.7 uh, million tons of cargo, and there are opportunities you can increase it more. Next slide, please. So we are, uh, we, we, we are actually proceeding further. That route just uh, actually because of COVID, a uh, lot of hindrances were, were there. We have signed the second addendum. And now the focus is on increasing the, uh, the product to be carried. There are very few number of products are carried on the inland waterways. I would like to request the investors or the protocol operators. You can uh, do not live in the fear of unknown. There are a lot of opportunity. It is, uh, as I have said, it is cheaper, safer. You use, uh, start using it. A lot of innovations are there in Bangladesh using the inland waterways. Next, please, sir. So this is another uh, avenue that is being not actually uh, the explored. That is the tourism, river tourism. If you just call anybody from the world, come and see how the hilsha fish is being care, caught in our Padda River or Meghna estuary. People will be interested to come and see that. Live with the uh, boatmen or the fishermen three, four days. There are a lot of opportunities. We only could uh, uh, conduct three ships 
and uh, of course there is a good news that Ganga Vilas is starting from uh, Varanasi and it's coming up to Dhubrigar this January 10 they were they are starting I would like to uh, request Fiki to explore more uh, give them we will provide all types of support if you want to do the tourism uh, all through the waterways next please so there are a lot of challenges as you all know heavy siltation is there next please uh, and also the river erosion Ranji that they face problem in taking the ship upward for the in the Chilmari area uh, most of the area in the monsoon but it is possible if you put a strong tug it's not uh, it's again the improvisation or innovation is required uh, the the expenditure is uh, not 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 much lack of safe navigable waters of course we are always trying to do that we need more investment even the private investment are always welcome in private public private partnership is always welcome by bangladesh government and uh, of course it is well say, said that customs and border formalities are always disturbing us which needs to be uh, looked in a more favorable way and of course the last one as i said the, the fear of unknown lack of investment in the iwt sector next please but good news is we have our uh, this uh, um, historical plan that is delta plan 2100 by our honorable prime minister we have prepared a delta fund for this purpose of reviving our river routes and also the flood protection and use of rivers and waters for the best practices and uh, we have a strategy of maintaining 10000 kilometers which is now around 6000 kilometers all weather 10000 kilometers of river routes so any of the routes will be uh, helpful for the northeastern part you can use that the government has this strategy the, the please this continue the slide this strategy of shifting the cargo load from roads to rail and waterways so it is another good news facilitate and estimate increase of triple volume trade between bangladesh and india by waterways that is one strategy government has taken integrate cross border infrastructure con connectivity we are getting support from world bank the project is going on on both sides uh, our world bank representative is here he can she can explain you more and also the multimodal system that is uh, for the last mile connectivity is very important we keep it in the port river ports then from there you can take it by rail or road whatever is uh, to up to the uh, the market or to the industry so i would like to uh, emphasize on uh, that we should think about the inland waterways facilities are there in bangladesh if you want to connect western part or if you want to do uh, business with bangladesh use the inland waterways and we bangladesh government is always ready to provide all the support thank you very much and inviting me and give me opportunity Thank you so much. That was wonderful. A very in-depth analysis and the suggestions are all very well taken. Uh, moving on, we have with us Ambassador Tariq Karim, uh, one of the architects of FIKI's uh, initiative for connectivity between Northeast India and Bangladesh. Uh, we, we have been privileged to have him with us since the beginning of the initiative in 2014. Thank you, sir, for everything. And thank you for being here today. Uh, may I invite you to kindly address us? Hello. Thank you very much, Vishadeep, uh, for your kind words and uh, for inviting me to uh, give a special address to this session. Uh, as you rightly mentioned, I have been 
uh, involved with you in this journey from the very beginning. Even before you started it, we had discussions and before we institutionalized it. And I think I went to all the summits, almost all, in the different states of the uh, Middle Northeast. Uh, thank Ranjit Barthakur, first, for having this vision of organizing an event like this and then deciding that it should be held in Dhaka. Thank you, Ranjit. I see many old friends here, uh, uh, Dr. Didar Singh, uh, with whom I used to interact very often when I was in Delhi. And uh, I'm very happy to see Tanvir here, uh, who headed our High Commission, Assistant High Commission in, in Guwahati. Uh, and I it took some doing on my part to get that mission established. Uh, it was, uh, I think, in my priority, the number one among the four I had recommended, it was the last. But that's the nature of things. It has happened, I'm glad. I actually recommended that it should be upgraded to a Deputy High Commission and Agatala to an Assistant High Commission. That will still take some time, but uh, the nature of the beast still remains the same, Commodore. The good thing is the beast has started moving. Uh, when I look back, when I met, went to India in 2009, I, I, I think at a lecture at the <clears throat> Foreign Affairs Institute, uh, the, the, uh, the, the association, they have a group, they invited me. I gave a PowerPoint in which the first slide was, there was a steep hill, it's a 90 degrees steep, and there's a man at the bottom who's trying to climb it. And I said, that man at the bottom is me, and where I want to reach is there. I hope I'll survive this journey. So when I see that and compare of what did not exist when I went in 2009, early 2009, and when I see what's happening today, I use this analogy of the beast. You have to get the elephant moving the elephant, the beast is moving. And it's moving, as it moves, it will pick up more momentum. That's the nature, the law of physics states that. The bigger the mass, the greater will be the velocity as it starts moving. When it starts moving at that velocity, our problem will be keeping it in check at some places so that it doesn't run over too many other things. Uh, you know, we, we talk about connectivity, and, and let me address this in broad sweep. Uh, economic community uh, connectivity and energy security. This, in a sense, is a misnomer. I would say connectivity between peoples. Who does economic activity? Who does commerce? Who does anything else? It's people. What we did to ourselves, this history of 75 years, is we disrupted people from meeting each other, connecting with each other, exchanging ideas with each other, coming to uh, consensus points where they could start doing things together as they had been. We are rediscovering what we had and we threw away. So it's always a more difficult process then, because you we transitioned from one mindset to a second mindset, and now we are retransitioning back. Getting back something lost is always more difficult than having preserving it when you have it. Connectivity, <clears throat> if you take just the Northeast, the whole of Northeast, Bengal, Bihar, Orissa, all this area, this comprised, this was part and parcel of what was known in our immediate past history as part of the Bengal Presidency. The Bengal Presidency was one of, was one of the three presidencies through which the British colonial administration administered India. Bombay, Madras, and Bengal. Bengal was the largest. Bengal also had the highest GDP. It was the richest. It had the highest per capita GDP. 
And I'll give you one guess where that was. Any guesses? Any takers? Shillong. Shillong was the summer capital of the Bengal presidency from 2005, well, from earlier, but from 2005 to 2011, the capital was in Dhaka. Uh, 1905 to 1911. It was in, uh, the Bengal presidency was Dhaka. So it had the highest GDP. Even historically, before the British came, from the fourth century onwards, the Bengal region, Bengal Suba, as the Mughals called it, was the richest Suba in, in India. Forget about, yes, there was Golconda and riches here, there and elsewhere, but as a region, Bengal was the most productive region because of its rich agriculture, its human resources, and everything else. Uh, Chinese uh, travelers came here in the fourth century and they've written in the records. Travelers from uh, Middle East, Ibn Battuta came, French traveler Ber Bernier came, Marco Polo skirted by. All of them wrote how rich Bengal was. Why did we lose it? That's the question we should be asking ourselves. It was an integrated ecological and economic unit. When the British came here, they inherited that. They took it up. Their main purpose and goal, they were colonizers, we were a colony, is to extract your raw materials and everything that you can get, take it to their manufacturing centers in Dundee and elsewhere, ship it back, and resell it to you. That's what they did. Roads were rudimentary. The only major road that connected whole of India at that time was the uh, uh, road built by Sher Shah Shuri. Okay, and that was also the Grand Trunk Road. But that was also difficult to maintain. And the British realized very soon that roads cannot be, it's, it's very uh, uh, capital invested, uh, 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 heavy, and difficult to maintain because of the different climatic and, and geomorphological terrain that it had to go through. They picked on the rivers. Then they said, we need something else to supplement it, to complement the roads. They developed the railways. By the late 1800s, they started the railways in Bombay, but by the late 1800s, they had built the railway network in Bengal. And so, if you imagine the human body's circulatory system, we have arteries, veins and capillaries. Without this system, our body will not exist. The blood circulation has to go through it. They looked on the rivers as the arterial system. You could say, I mean, this is the nearest analogy I can, I can, I can use to explain this. And, and the railways were the sort of venous systems taking from the main arteries to different hub points and the roads were the capillaries which would connect with the farthest points to which you could not reach otherwise. And they used it with great dexterity. Then they built a chain of coastal ports. Karachi, Bombay, Madras, Vishakhapatnam, Kolkata, coming down uh, to, to uh, uh, Chittagong, uh, then going to Burma, and onwards, and into Singapore through the uh, Malacca Straits. They used these coastal ports along the Bay of Bengal and on the Arabian Sea on the western side to extract the goods, take it to the anthropods in Malaysia, uh, in, in, in Sri uh, Singapore, and then on, and bring it back the same way. We destroyed that. We threw it away after 47. We restored our direct maritime communication only in 2015. I initiated the proposal in 2010. It's finally initiated in 2015. I recommended the resumption of coastal shipping in 2010. It's happened now, but I wish it happens more. And then on that point, uh, Commodore Sadek, I would mention, you mentioned about the river route, inland water transport route. 
The transport route which come, cuts across now, that route, if, I, if the map were there, the coastal route should supplement that for commercial and uh, uh, normal transportation. Use that route only for ecotourism because that runs through the heart of the Sundarbans. As time goes by, you will have more and more ecologists and environmentalists coming up and, and adding fuel to the political debate. Use the coastal shipping room, it will bypass the Sundarbans and then link up with us through Mangla and Chittagong and elsewhere further north. But use that for ecotourism. Secondly, you showed three vessels there, new vessels. And I saw one of them using solar panels. Convert, even our small boats are using diesels. You, somehow we have to stop that. We are talking about net zero uh, uh, goals. We have to stop this, convert as many vessels as you can to use renewable energy. And particularly if you're using small cruising ships uh, along the Sundarban routes, use them with uh, solar panels. Uh, I know that India has developed some boats. They are using it in certain river rules for ecotourism. Uh, just an idea, but I think we need to look into it when we are looking into the larger issue of global warming, climate change, and you know, preserving the ecology. So, we are slowly regaining that. I'm the happiest to learn that, you know, I mean, the, the, we have reversed the, the priorities we accorded from land to rail to river. Uh, it fits and dovetails with India's own, own policy because we try to maintain and preserve our uh, waterways as much as we could, but it is always dependent on what happens in the upper riparian countries, how efficiently you can manage it. When both countries have similar goals, that all you need to do is to coordinate these goals. Uh, when I was advising the World Bank, I said, focus on the river rules and the last mile connectivity. The rivers don't stop at the borders. This is the tragedy. We, everyone thinks the rivers begins at the borders and ends at the border. But that's not it. That's the ecology. It does not respect, assent the man-made Westphalian rules of hard borders. It will flow whether you like it or not. You build a get dam, it will break the dam or it will flow around it. It's a force of nature. It has a personality of its own. We have to respect that. We can do that by harnessing it, training it, and using it for our benefit. That is uh, the ecology converting to economics. We have not learned that. We need to do that. So I'm very happy with what the IWTA is doing. I had once visited your office, your predecessor, about three, of, three years or four years ago. And I, I see that you have, you're still on track and doing what is required to be done. Um, we mentioned only three, the rail, railroads, uh, five out of eight that existed pre-partition, I think, are three are fully operational, uh, two more are sort of half operational, one additional line has been added. Uh, I'm disappointed at the rate at which, I mean, how much time, and you mentioned this, the uh, small link, very small link, no major geo, geo, geomorphological or geophysical challenges uh, from, uh, uh -huh. is, is still taking. Okay, it's, and, and uh, that would be the real connectivity. It will change the topography uh, of, of the Northeast uh, connectivity with, with, with us. Now, apart from this, there are other, other connectivities. Energy is now going to be the increasingly important connectivity uh, uh, segment between our two countries. And not just two countries. As was mentioned by Saurav in yesterday's session, we have to think big. I said we have to think bigger. We are in a position to have a sub-regional electricity grid if only politically we decide to go ahead with it. 
With India, our grids are connected both in the East and the West. India is, has a great connection with Nepal. They have a great connection with Bhutan. We, on energy security, if you're talking of it and greening energy, this Northeast sector section alone, the region alone has anywhere perhaps 150 to 200,000 megawatts. I don't know. Now the figures would be very vastly different because when the figures were first tabulated, that was a couple of decades ago. Uh, now, <clears throat> the areas which we would have thought of flooding with water to build dams, you cannot do that. There will be political pressure because the demography has changed. It will probably be much less. But even, let us say, we can get 100,000 megawatts harvested. That's a huge amount of electricity we are getting, and it's all... <clears throat> Forgive me, uh, I've been taxing my throat too much. It's, it's about to give way. <clears throat> Our transition to green energy will be phenomenal if we can just harness into it. Why hasn't it happened? It hasn't happened because we shot ourselves in both feet. It hasn't happened because we cut ourselves off. We cut our hands off and threw them in different directions. We cut our legs off and threw them in another direction. It hasn't happened. No one is going to invest in producing power in the Northeast unless you can take the power to a user somewhere. The Northeast population is very small. Where will you take it across the Himalayas? To China? No, you can't do that. You might take it to Southeast Asia, but they are not developing their own self-sufficiency with the Mekong Delta projects. You can take it to us, to ourselves. Bihar is power starved. We are power hungry. The whole of India is power hungry. Industrial revolutions do not happen without energy backing it. I used to tell my students in Maryland when I was telling them about engines of growth, I said, imagine you're designing a car and you build the finest car you have with all the, you know, the, the uh, whatever you call it, loaded into it. It will not run without two things. One, when you turn the ignition, the electrical circuit has to function and the engine has to start. The cylinders have to fire and they have to fire in sync. Number two, okay, if that happens, whether you will be driving that car from your post to the gate or from the gate to 20 miles or 200 miles will depend on how much gas you have in the tank. What we had done was we had dismantled the machine. We have put it back. It's in a position to run, but we don't have the fuel. We need that fuel now, yesterday if possible. Just this crisis that's happened to the far west of us has crippled us. What was mentioned, I think Tanvir mentioned it, value chains and regional value chains and supply chains. We have to have them ourselves, nationally and regionally. I mentioned this two years ago when COVID set it. I said the global value chains have, have collapsed. How can we depend on the global value chains? If they collapse again, we'll be totally annihilated. They will survive. They have enough reserve stocks. They will survive. The populations are small. We will not. I don't still see that happening. Unless there's a sense of urgency, we will have serious problems. I could go on and on. Uh, but I congratulate you for, for bringing this together. And uh, this exchange of ideas now needs to be translated into operationalization of ideas. I'm glad Tanvir is here and uh, he will be hopefully be in a position in the ministry to be able to push some of these things. And uh, I see uh, Nul Islam Khan is here. I'm, I'm very happy to see him, and I hope that he, with his connections and influence, will also be able to do some things to push some ideas in the right directions. We may have 10, 12, 20 ideas. The important thing is sequencing the order in which we are going to operationalize it. Pick up the smallest, the, the easiest one, make it happen, the others will happen. You take the most difficult ones, everything else will get stuck. Thank you all very much.
Thank you so much, sir, uh, for your very lucid presentation. Even for the uninitiated, I think uh, people would have got a fair idea of the issues, the opportunities, and the way forward. Uh, as you as you rightly said, sir, uh, I think it is. Oh, we have been ideating for a long time. There are many ideas. Now it is time to operationalize those ideas. It's time to work on a plan to get action on the ground and and to actually see connectivity happening, actually see more cooperation happening between the two countries. Thank you so much, sir. And now it is my pleasant task to actually offer the vote of thanks. But now that the traffic gods have finally smiled on us and we have people in the hall, I don't want to bore everyone with a long vote of thanks. I would rather just thank everyone, particularly uh, Dr. Tariq Karim, uh, Ambassador Tariq Karim for being here with us, Dr. Uh, Tanbir, Tanbir Mansoor, uh, Mr. Bhaskar Jyoti Fukan for your support, sir, and for being here, uh, and, and of course, Commodore uh, Gulam Sadek. Thank you so much for being here with us, for sharing your thoughts. And we hope to take this forward further. Uh, uh, let's take this as a beginning of a discussion. And we'd like to interact with you further as we go along and see as to how we can work with you to uh, uh, build seamless connectivity between the Northeastern region of India and Bangladesh. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, my colleague was telling me that after the next session, we have a break, but as I said, Traffic god gods don't smile easily. So we are going on to the next session. And after the next session, probably we'll break for tea for a few minutes. Uh, the next session is going to be chaired by Dr. Didar Singh. Uh, Dr.